Herman Mashaba, the founder and uh, leader of Action SA. You've been doing a lot of stuff lately, and Herman, I thought it would be a good idea to catch up with you. Well, let's start off with the big news today. Uh, Athol Trollope joining Action SA. He, he was one of the heavyweights in the Democratic Alliance. How did all of this come about? It came about uh, first, uh, you know, when uh, we launched the People's Dialogue in 2019 after I resigned from the DA. Uh, I tried to get together with him. Unfortunately, I couldn't. And I just really left it because I think we were overwhelmed by the response of the People's Dialogue. So I said, let me focus on People's Dialogue before really inviting people to join because the real, the whole idea behind the People's Dialogue was to establish whether people were calling for me to start a political party were real or not. You know, So we ran until end of uh, February, as you are aware. Uh, and I think uh, when I actually uh, started this project for me, my target uh, uh, was uh, half a million people. I said, if I have half a million, it will be good enough number. And you remember, we ended up with what 4.2 million submissions, uh, which I, I had no choice than mm -hmm. to to start a political party, which we launched on the 29th of August, 2020. Remember, the, right in the middle of of of, of COVID. And now I was overwhelmed with everything else and uh, now had to prepare for e elections with the IEC making it difficult for us uh, to register and really giving us uh, hell. You know, so making contact uh, with Arthur because I knew we were not going to contest the Eastern Cape. So I said, uh, let, let me leave uh, some of the people out, focus on the muni areas and municipalities where we're going to contest. And do you remember what happened? Groundbreaking electoral reform, historic. And um, so after that, that's when now it dawned on me that uh, 2024 is around the corner and I've already made commitment that uh, Action SA is going to contest nationally all nine provinces. So before I went on vacation, in fact, early December, I tried to get hold of uh, 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 Atoll at the time, but then our diaries couldn't meet and I had to, to go on vacation in Mexico. So on my return, that's when I pursued the matter and we met at the beginning of, of January. Uh, they had a meeting at my house, uh, many hours. Uh, I thought it's a very uh, great, strong individual, in really engaged, wanting to really understand. And obviously, I think for me, I also had an advantage of uh, knowing him reasonably well uh, during my days in the in uh, in the DA. And it eventually, last week, uh, we finalized, uh, signed off, and. Um, Really, actually, uh, the, the, I nearly made a mistake personally. I said to my team, let's have the conference here. We just bring Arthur here. But my team said, no way. So let's have it uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Nelson Mandela Bay Municipality because we've got structures. I did not honestly and truly didn't know that we had people on the ground. I, we had people t today coming all the way from yesterday from Buffalo Bay who were there to come and uh, welcome at all. I was really, um, really inspired and uh, really, I, I just, it's beyond, it's been incredible. And um, we had a really great uh, press conference and uh, it looks like so far, uh, at all has been really well received. So I'm really, I feel proud uh, to, to really be associated with someone like that to be our provincial chair. You know what the media, or you can, you can read a room very well. Was the media in uh, Nelson Mandela Bay receptive to this? Were they, because there's been a lot of mess going on in that part of the world. I think uh, to, to, to say was the media was receptive was an understatement. I think uh, it was a full house. We had a full house. Uh, the, I think uh, we only had two rounds of questions uh, because uh, they were, everyone was overwhelmed uh, by this news. Uh, I'm also still uh, overwhelmed. I, I think poor uh, 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 Athol, I looked at his diary. We had our national spokesperson, Lerato, organizing his interviews. I mean, the poor guy from immediately after the uh, after the uh, the press conference i can tell you until probably 10 11 this, this evening he's got one media house everyone who is actually looking to really talk to him as i've just arrived home now well, uh, as i get into my bedroom to drop my uh, my uh, my suitcase 
that's at uh, Alec live on SABC Full View. You know, incredible. And so it's it's really been overwhelming. The news have been well received, but I think for us as Section SA, we honestly and truly believe we've got an asset with someone with many years of experience, committed uh, to this country, not to Action SA, because I really want South Africans that are joining Action SA, please don't join us to come and save Action SA. Use Action SA as a vehicle to save this country from the ANC. We, we, the, our preference is South Africa first. Let's put uh, the interest of this country ahead of our political party. Our political party is a vehicle to really drive us towards unseating the ANC in 2024. Herman, were you close to Ethel Trollope when you were in the DA? Not really. I think we, we had a professional relationship as a mayor of, 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 uh, of, of Nelson Mandela Bay. We were all, all uh, uh, we all served uh, in FedEx. So I used to see him once a month when uh, there were uh, the FedEx uh, the meetings. So that's how I used to really engage him, really at a professional level. But I had exactly the same relationship as I had with Musi because I was never that, you can't say I was friendly friends with Musi. We had a professional relationship, uh, so, and and, um, and I'd really like to keep it that way so that uh, we, we must not uh, really cloud uh, personal relationship with this project, with this pro- very important national project. This project is not about making friendship. It's about saving society. So uh, there's been a lot of uh, discussion as well about Makosi Kosi from, um, Koza rather, from KZN, who was also a big fish when she joined you, but now it's left. What's the backstory there? Well, uh, obviously we were taken by surprise after the elections when she wrote to, to us uh, requesting uh, to step uh, down as a provincial chair and uh, uh, also stepping down from Senate and only serve as a, as a the, the ward councillor. And I was, uh, and uh, and uh, a week later or so, that's when we learned of a election as uh, MPEG by the ANC. That whole matter really took us by total surprise. And uh, but as Senate, uh, we obviously really had a, a Senate meeting to discuss this matter. And all of us said, look, you know what? We can't really reverse this decision. MPEG is a very important uh, uh, strategic uh, position uh, for, for, for Makosi to really play. And we said, OK, we leave it as such. But then I was surprised when uh, 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 accepted her resignation to, uh, uh, from from being the provincial chair and uh, the saying that she's changed her mind. And I said, no, because it does not really work like that. If you made up your mind uh, to resign, we, we are accepting this. And uh, we left it as such, including actually preparing a press statement to that effect. And we got her to sign that press statement so that it reflects uh, what, what transpired. She signed it off. And then uh, while we're in, on vacation now, January, we, uh, we start getting some vibes that um, Makosi has been uh, um, uh, removed from Senate and uh, provincial chair. And it's something that uh, personally I don't really take kindly to it. Uh, and and uh, obviously reported the matter to our disciplinary committee. Um, at this point in time, they are pursuing the, the matter. So we, I'm really hoping to really get the results uh, of, 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 um, of their findings and, and uh, uh, what, action, what course of action to take. But I personally they reported uh, this matter to our disciplinary committee because uh, I, I really, honestly, I don't really operate in a manner where, you know, we, we are... We agree on something, and then you decide uh, to 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 change your mind and and make accusations that are, I'm not sure what they're founded on. It's I suppose it's a young organisation. You you would recall um, from your business world, uh, your business experience that young businesses go through this kind of thing as well. Uh, but I'm not sure if you've had a chance to read Justice Malala's uh, crit on Action SA today, where he said. It's good for South Africa that uh, Herman must just stay the course. There's, there's apparently all kinds of ructions going on within the party. 
um, and that you are saying it's it's agents, provocateur, etc. Again, can you give us some insight from your perspective on on how big these reactions are and how you're dealing with them? I think it's it's actual uh, absolute nonsense uh, for people to say the massive uh, reactions uh, within Action S8. It's over exaggeration. Yes, we've got an issue with of course which we've raised. We've had uh, issues uh, with uh, some uh, uh, ambitious uh, people who joined our party, thinking that uh, we are an employment agency, claiming that uh, they they are responsible for for our performance. That, that kind of nonsense. So these are former members uh, uh, that we've uh, obviously fortunate enough we've already flushed them out of our of our system and now some of them uh, obviously working with some of the people who are planted to come and cause disruptions to that meeting in 20 and we're dealing with them they are also uh, uh, in our disciplinary committee and I, and I strongly believe that uh, uh, one of those days they're going to be former members because we are not going to tolerate uh, the kind of anarchy um, in our organization. That's something that people must understand. Uh, if uh, you think uh, you can be sent uh, to come and disrupt our meetings uh, and uh, call the media uh, that, that there are serious uh, disruptions without, uh, within our party, that's absolute nonsense. Uh, but Obviously, it's what it is uh, from some of the people in, in the media that are obviously just really looking for for news. I think uh, our party is solid. Uh, you've, uh, you show you're away. Just within the last uh, the 60 days, we've really managed to bring three high-powered uh, South Africans. We've got Jose uh, Kwena uh, as Northwest Prov uh, Provincial Chair in December. January, we brought in a real star by the, the former mayor of Midval, uh, Bongani Baloyi. Today, it's a adult trolley. Then how can really be portrayed as a as a party in 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 turmoil? These are just um, uh, issues that uh, are saying to me we we need to strengthen our intelligence uh, to, uh, and 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 our capacity to really be able to to deal with this nonsense as a matter of agency. You cause problems uh, with inaction as a we we have a constitution which is in line with the constitution of our Republic of South Africa. We're a voluntary organization. If you don't like uh, what we do, please, uh, you're out. We, we, it's either you walk or we're going to flush you out. Herman, what about uh, the decision that you've taken to step down as a uh, from the council of the of the Johannesburg Metro, uh, it makes a lot of sense, I guess, from a strategic perspective, because 2024 is approaching, and as the party leader, there's there are a lot more fish to fry. But what what shaped that decision of yours? I think, uh, Alec, uh, I'm only really one person. I can only work so many hours. You can imagine I just uh, just arrived, uh, been in, uh, in the Eastern Cape since yesterday. Um, I'm needed uh, in, in Limpopo, in Bumalanga. I have to deal uh, with all the six municipalities uh, where we've uh, contested. Uh, I'm needed in the Western Cape and so forth. And at the same time, council work, uh, it uh, requires uh, dedication. And all can imagine our saving as a caucus leader. And I said, guys, uh, please, I may think um, our 2024 project to succeed, would you guys mind? Let's give uh, someone else a chance. Let me step down from actually failing um, to you as, co uh, as our caucus and also failing my duty as, 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 as a councillor. I think 2024 is around the corner. We still have, uh, obviously, up to, to now, we've got pro provincial chairpersons in pro five provinces. There's four more. Uh, to, to pick up. And you can imagine that responsibility of identifying another trollip in, in Limpopo, another trollip in Mpumalanga, in Northwest and, uh, and, and Free State. So I've got a huge responsibility to identify um, provincial uh, leadership uh, that can steer this uh, um, movement uh, to unseat the ANC. Because one thing that people must understand, we are in this business to unseat the ANC. That, that's our main objective, our primary objective. 
is to constitutionally remove ANC. And the only way we can remove the ANC, that basically means I have to recruit um, capable, because we have proven beyond any reasonable doubt that we are not only a party that uh, that is committed uh, to unseating the ANC. We are capable. We did it uh, first round. The party, just under a year, uh, we are now the sixth biggest political party in the country, officially. Um, everywhere where we contest that you get all the three metros in Johannesburg, sorry, in Gauteng, remember we were, everyone was contesting to take the ANC under, um, under 50%. We've taken them in the mid, uh, lower 30s. So that says to we've given South Africans the hope and the possibility that uh, ANC come 2024, us as Action SA, we want to drive them way below 30%. That is our objective. Uh, that, that, and the only way you can achieve this is to ensure that I have strong provincial leaders who can work with our structures uh, on the ground. So it's a, it's, it's a building process. Um, but what is going on in Kuruleni? You did mention Gauteng earlier. There was a statement that came out from the other members of your coalition, which appears as though there's discord between yourselves and them. And uh, the, the main reason apparently is because you want to bring the EFF into the picture. Again, what's the story on that? I think it's it's a very unfortunate situation with our coalition partners. Uh, their short sightedness. Uh, I think uh, it's because obviously uh, my view is that they don't want to unseat the ANC. They want to find a way to bring this ANC back uh, uh, through the back door. The only way we we, we can survive because uh, for 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 that matter, we we don't have the majority to be able end of this month uh, to pass the adjustment budget. The only way we can pass the adjustment budget is that we've got to get the support from the EFF or the ANC. And you know the, we are not going to get the, the one from the ANC. And what obviously upsets me, and I thought, let me take people of Ikuruleni into confidence, because I don't operate like this. When I was approached and reluctantly to, to say, please, can you speak to the EFF uh, to... to, to, to uh, to uh, to really vote with us, approached first uh, by 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 the mayor of the city of Johannesburg on numerous occasions, and I said to to Dr. Palazzi, mayor, to say, please get your party to give it to me in writing, and they did. They uh, gave me the the, the 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 it in writing, and I approached the EFF to say, what is it that you want? Because your local structures have already had the discussions uh, with with the mayor. Um, is that acceptable to you that? EFF was happy to say, look, we don't want to really be in a coalition or in government with you guys. But the only thing is that uh, uh, the proposal from the mayor to really get uh, uh, oversight committees, we are happy. So that as long as we can keep the ANC out. Now, I take it back uh, to the coalition partners that are refusing, including actually lying to the country that, uh, that I had no mandate. When I have it in writing. You know, uh, uh, what kind of human beings are this uh, that um, are prepared to lie, even when they know I've got the evidence of uh, of, of of the mandate that was given uh, to me? Uh, and uh, that's when I felt, let me take people of Ukrulen into consider uh, into confidence uh, that uh, in the event uh, there's a motion of no confidence and uh, this government collapses, that uh, action as a uh, at least had the decency and the courtesy to inform them way in advance. Because uh, and, and the very same thing um, might happen in Johannesburg because our 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 uh, Johannesburg uh, coalition uh, uh, majority is not yet uh, finalized. Uh, so Johannesburg might also experience a similar kind of situation. So. One, obviously, I think EFF was happy to, based on the proposal brought forward by the DA, to play an oversight role. And for me, it just does not make sense. It's no brainer to get the EFF to not in government, but play oversight role. In fact, that's where I believe you will run a government that can be accountable because you are running as government. You are now having someone who's playing an oversight role who does not agree with you. So you can imagine that basically means that you as government have to do what is right. So 
for for me, it's just no brainer. Uh, instead of uh, um, subjecting residents of uh, Gurulendi to a government that can collapse any minute.